The Diamondbacks defeat the New York Mets 5-2 to two in game number 15 of the 2022 season. So anyway, make sure to hit the subscribe button here. Subscribe to the AZ Snake Pit channel here on YouTube as well as drop a like. And if you want to leave a comment on how well the D-backs offense performed in this game. So anyway... In this game, the Diamondbacks sent up Humberto Castellanos while the Mets sent out Trevor Williams, former ASU star, uh, starting pitcher, to counter the Diamondbacks. The D-backs did a, did a pretty good job against Williams, chasing him in the third inning with nobody out and scoring four runs off of him and took a 4 nothing lead. And it was not necessarily uh, hits with runners and scoring, but just executing the little things, small ball is how the D-backs put up most of their runs, although they did get a hit with the bases loaded for the first time this season. Our lucky bat, the lucky batter to break that streak, Dalton Varsho, who had two hits from the leadoff spot. As his bat has heated up in the last week or so. And obviously, but the D-backs also getting a season high in hits, 11 hits, and it wasn't necessarily one guy doing all the damage. It was hits up and down the order. Seven of nine starters recording a hit, Seth Beer. And uh, Cattell Marte are the only two that didn't get a hit, although we'll excuse Marte for driving in a run, and Seth Beer for walking, th drawing all three of the D-backs' walks. So the early run support, I think, was uh, pretty huge. Humberto Cassiano's four innings, Cruz through four innings. Ran into a little bit of trouble in the fifth inning. Mets squared up a couple balls. And then uh, two outs of play, that wasn't made at second base. Ended up in a second run scoring. It kind of sucks a little bit. Actually, no, that no, wasn't a second out. But, uh, a chance to possibly get out in that situation. But, uh, fortunately, after the second run, the D-backs got a double play. Perdomo catching a line drive and then doubling off the runner at first base. It was huge. Could have been a big inning, but then the double play pretty much put a damper on that one. And that was it for the Mets scoring, although they did have one more chance in the seventh inning. So five innings, two runs for Castellanos. Let me take a look. Five strikeouts, one walk, solid performance all around. Like I said, he's probably keeping that rotation spot warm for Ryan Nelson, but as long as he keeps performing, keep sending him out there. Kind of situation. Two starts against the Mets, nine innings, two runs. Um, four walks and six strikeouts. There's still a bit of a... Still have a little bit of concern to command hit or go sometimes, but he was on point tonight. So we give him his props and hope he does it again five days from now. Then we get to the, like I said, the offense. D-back scored a run in the first, two in the second, three another one in the third, putting up a four nothing lead. And the four nothing lead is a good thing to have in a situation. They never trailed at one point in the game. In fact, had a lead in all nine innings. That was something that uh, 2017 D-backs had a streak, a pretty long, lengthy streak of doing. So. Like, nice to see on the channel that. Anyway, after that, I thought after Castellanos left the game, the bullpen did a pretty good job. Uh, Noy Ramirez had a little bit of command issues, seemed to have trouble hitting the glove side of the plate. And he ended up walking two hitters, although <laughs> I can understand him not giving in the Lindor there. Got Alonzo the fan at a... Got Alonzo the fan at a changeup <laughs> bounced in front of home plate. Got Starling Marte on a perfectly placed fastball for the first out. Then after uh, two walks, they brought in Kyle Nelson. Nelson gets the next four outs. Couple, and it could have. It was a situation where the seventh inning could have gotten out of hand. So first batter, dribbler back to the mound. Nelson kind of misses first base a little bit with a throw. Walker has to go off the back to catch it. Situation. Next batter, two pitches in wild pit uh, after jumping ahead 0-2 to McNeil. One of the wildest pitches <laughs> hits home plate, bounces straight up off of Kel Carson Kelly behind the plate, bounces straight up and then lands right behind and it lands right in front of them in the situation. Then, uh, actually, was it McNeil that was first up? I don't remember, but anyway, McNeil hits a hard line that bounces that uh, one hops off of Cano's right foot, gives the D backs an uh. Very lucky break. In fact, the D-backs had a similar situation happen to them in the fifth inning where Seth Beer got hit by a hard ground ball going from first to second. In that situation. So the, it lucked even him out. Luck evened out. We won't be too salty over that. But anyway, that happens. 
Then the next batter, ground ball to second base, Cattell Marte boots an inning ending double play. And as was last year would indicate, anytime they boot an inning ending double play, a big inning happened. Fortunately, next batter bounces it right to shortstop. Perdomo turns the double play himself. And they get it out of that inning. Like I said, another situation where a big inning was a monster inning was thwarted by a double play ball, and it was very both of them were very timely. Then the then another chance for the D-backs were to tack on here. Situation where there was some bad baseball by the Mets and D-backs making some hustle plays. Sixth inning. And Perdomo leads it off, hits a ball, rockets a ball off the wall. And it's definitely a nice development to see Perdomo drive balls to left field. Not just like slap it that way, but drive it into the gaps and off the wall. Hits it off the wall. McNeil fan, tries to make a spectacular catch, completely fans on it. Ball gets behind. Ball gets past him. So now a uh, foot race, and Perdomo's going to get the third base easily. We'll st- end up triple. Any more mishandling would have been an inside. It would have been a, a, a complete run on that, situ- and on that play alone. After that, uh, Varsha strikes out on a wild pitch. And for whatever reason, Pete Alonso, I don't, his defense at first base is not very good. But then again, I've, I've, spent, I've watched eight years watching Paul Goldschmidt look, play like the best first baseman in the world. So, I have standards. Anyway, Alonso, for whatever reason, on a wild pitch, doesn't cover first base. He runs to the mound for some reason. Okay. Give Dalton first base. Mets are very lucky it didn't cost him another run situation. Then uh, Varsho on an aggressive stolen base attempt. Gamble, uh, a little bit of a bad jump, bad throw. Forces Lindor to run 10 feet off the bag to catch it. Varsho slides underneath it. That's enough of a lane for Varsho to slide in safely. Overslides the bag, but nobody, the ball's nowhere near second base, so it's not a big deal. So anyway, next batter, Marte. Hard ground ball right at Cano. Two feet either way. It's two feet the other way, and the Dimex win, probably win seven to five or something like that. I mean, seven to or something like that kind of situation. It kind of sucked. And then Peralta gets a fastball up and away. Not a strike, but it's something he can drive to the other way. So I don't fall him for swinging at that. Pitch he can drive to the outfield for a sack fly, does it? Which is something the team hasn't done a very good job of maybe being too selective in that situation. When you see something up that you can do, hit the other way, just go for it. Does it? Sack fly to left field. There's no way. McNeil, even though McNeil had plenty of time to get under it, it's a. Perdomo runs too well to be thrown out from 300 feet away. Situation that was their fifth and final run. Now with the lead hand off the bullpen, eighth inning, Ian Kennedy. A little bit of help from home plate on Pirate. It was a wide outside. The outside part of the zone was wide. To, Tonight, consistently wide. D-backs took advantage. And Kenny was peppering the ball four inches off the the actual outside edge of the strike zone. But the ump kept calling it, so it's not his fault. Keep doing it. And uh, I think so. First batter, Marte swings at a couple fastballs outside. Perfect hits it right at Christian Walker. Like I said, perfectly positioned for the first out. Second batter was uh, Lindor. Lindor. Battles back in the count, 2-2, gets a fastball that he can do something with, hits a rope in the right field, hits a frozen rope into the gap. McCarthy cuts it off, holds the Lindor to a single, although it wouldn't matter because uh, he didn't get anywhere past first, but he did not advance farther than first. So then uh, we're the next batter, but Kennedy ended up, uh, oh yeah, Alonzo. Alonzo got rung up on three outside fastballs, three pitches. First pitch was probably an inch off the plate. Second and third strikes are about four inches off the plate, but the ump kept calling it. So if we can't have accuracy, we'll take consistency. So Kennedy gets a scoreless eighth inning. So it would be interesting to see the ninth inning. Melanson had gone back to back in the uh, final game of the series against Washington and then the first game against the Mets. The Mets series, so back to back. Then what I get, and also the fact that it's early in the season, you have more relievers. So he decides to go with Joe Mantiply, which is a good move, in my opinion. Three lefties do up to hit in the ninth inning. At worst case scenario, you've gotten a guy off the, you've forced Buck Showalter to use a guy off the bench. In a situation where you just have, it's a situation where you just avoid walks, let your defense catch the ball, and have your defense catch the ball and we'll call the day, which is exactly what happened. So Mantiply comes in the ninth, face Dominic Smith, two pitches, ground ball to shortstop. Up for the first out. 
Next batter, Mark Canna jumps ahead, aggressive in the strikes, and he wasn't pitching. To, well, he was pitching to the edges. He was perfectly hitting the edges, but he was uh, attacking the strike zone. And then against Canna, perfectly paced pitch for strike one. Fouls, uh, uh, one one count, challenges him out over the plate, gets a foul ball, strike two, and then perfectly placed change up right in that low inside corner for strike three. Canna can watch the replay. That was perfect. He placed. That's okay. Not to get upset about that one. Third batter, JD Davis jumps ahead of him as well. Strike with strike one. Davis hits a hard ground ball to third base. Alcantara makes a sick diving stop and throws an absolute seed to first base to get Davis out by 15 feet. That was probably the best play I've seen from a third baseman in a long time. Who's na- from a player not named Nolan Arenado or Matt Chapman? Yeah, so nice stop, stop for the third out. D backs. Mets probably gets a save, although I would consider a three out, three inning, I mean, a three run lead, a, lo, a medium leverage situation at worst. But that's, uh, he got the job done. So he can have the stat for it. But anyway, that was probably, arguably, this outside of the game against Washington, their best game of the year, obviously. A little bit of hiccup defensively in that seventh inning. So they were able to pick it up. They'll have to, uh, Figure out what's wrong with I. Well, I think the problem with Marte is he's probably a little too beefed up. You can be overly muscular. I think it's affecting him offensively, defensively. Although, I'm not sure. The guys, he's having a slump both offense and defense. You gotta kind of figure that one out. That's pretty much the biggest thing we're in team. You're seeing Varsho, Smith, Paven Smith, Carson Kelly starting to hit again. And they're getting some country. Perdomo has gotten four hits in his last two games. So you're seeing the offense. And then Seth Beer is doing is continuously reaching base. Doesn't matter if it's right or left handed. So, yeah, the offense starting to offense is starting to climb out of that early season slump. And that's nice to see because when the team scores four runs, they are four and two. Of course, I would obviously say four runs is probably a team record is going to look completely different. Three or less versus four more. Obviously, across the entire game. But it's nice to see that four runs seems to be the magic number. The pitch, thanks to the pitching, the bullpen's been above expectations, in both performance and peripherals, in my opinion. I mean, in per- both the eye test and stats, kind of thing. So hopefully they win tomorrow. They'll be throwing Madison Bumgarner against former U of A pitcher Tyler McGill. McGill's off to a really hot start. Bumgarner is stranding a lot of walks, kind of situation. You hope the D-backs can take a series here. I think it'll help them relax going in. And uh, winning four or five is always a good thing. Kind of situation. So we'll see what tomorrow brings.